You can probably relate to this, but I struggle a lot with anxiety. I'm always feeling overwhelmed by the huge amount of tasks I have to do. And being a creative, I'm constantly being pestered by my own ideas for new projects. Also, as an immigrant, I'm fully responsible for my entire family. And we all know adulting is hard. And that's why I'm so passionate about Notion. It's an amazing tool. I'll show you what a realistic notion that is actually used every single day looks like and how I use it to simplify my life. I did take some time to make my pages a little bit prettier because it motivates me to look at it every day and create the habit, but you do not need to do that because this is your space and it's not made to be displayed to others. It's made to make your life easier. So don't pressure yourself and just focus on what you need to get done. If you want something cute, but don't want to waste your time doing it, you can just download my free template or just search other templates available out there. There is nothing wrong with using a template if it saves your time. So on the sidebar, you can see that I have a section with my favorite pages, which are the ones that I have like quick access. And then underneath here, I have all the main pages. I can also access them here on my dashboard. And the dashboard is one of the prettiest pages that I have at the moment because it's the kind of like the entry point to my notion. So sometimes if I'm confused, overwhelmed, I don't know what to do on that day, I have everything here at a glance and I can, you know, easily navigate to whatever page I need to go in. So here I have the log section and in the log section, I have everything related to tasks and just daily responsibilities. I have the log phone page. I have the quests, finances, wish list and journal. Then on my desk is everything related to work and creative work. So I have the YouTube channel, the video game that I'm developing, stories, projects, and my design work, which is my actual fashion. Then the cafe is kind of like a lounge or an entertainment area. Um, this is what I go to track um, whatever games I'm playing, things that I'm watching, books that I'm reading, and then I have the recipes and my studies as well when I when it's relevant. And then the garden is the section that I didn't really know what to call it, to be honest, but it's the pages that I don't use often at all. These pages are, they are very occasional. It's the vision, which is kind of like goals and stuff about like my cat and my family, then traveling, which I don't travel that often, then workshops and then house projects is just stuff related to the house. So these are pages that I don't use often. So they are like at the bottom of the list. Scrolling down on my dashboard, I have the bulletin board section, which I have quick links to things that I log in every day. So these are like for the games that I'm playing and Headspace is for kind of like meditating. It's like a really cool app if you don't use it. It's quite famous. I imagine most people have heard of it, but Headspace is amazing. I have a subscription from my workplace that they give us. So I'm making the most out of it. Um, then I have like a couple quotes just for inspiration. I don't actually read that th them that often, but I like to have it here. And then I have the weather and I have the moon phase. And then I also have a countdown. So this countdown, I change from time to time. These are all like Indify widgets, which is a website that I'll link in the description. Um, my next main goal is applying for citizenship and I have almost a year <laughs> left. So once I do that, then I'll just replace this with another goal. And down below the last section that I have on my dashboard is the lounge. So I do have a Spotify account and I do listen to music on Spotify, but for some reason, I just love listening to music on YouTube. So I have all of these like aesthetic, vibe um, kind of playlists and I have a list with all of them. So at the moment I have my current favorites, which are these three. And depending on my mood on that day, if I need to get work done, if I need to write anything, if I need to just chill, if I'm having a bad day, then I have kind of like a selection of playlists for every single mood. I have like Lord of the Rings soundtracks with lo-fi and then I have like medieval tavern um, bard music, you know, and I have like soundtracks. I don't think everyone would need that section. It's just because I like to listen to music on YouTube for some reason. Um, moving forward, then the first page, which is also listed here, is the log phone. The log phone is essentially an inbox where I write down every single note that is in my mind at the moment. 
And the reason why it has like phone in brackets and the reason why it's so simple, it's because as much as I love Notion, using Notion on the phone is kind of a pain when you have everything set up like this, because sometimes you want to write down something and you accidentally use a thumb and then you resize something by accident or you delete something by like just using on the phone is not that great. It's not that intuitive. So what I have, I put like this button here and I put an example there. Um, but basically when I'm on my phone, I can just click add note and then I can write like whatever, you know, so it's very straightforward. If I'm on the go, if I'm like in a train, if I'm at work, whatever is happening at the moment, um, if I don't have my computer near me, only my phone, I can quickly write down every thought that I have. So this page is really useful. I use that quite often. And then following that, I have the quests page. And this is the page that I use every single day. It's the most important page in my whole notion. And it has this big database here that I split up in a board that is separated by date. I have some quick links like to the exercise schedule and to Notion calendar, but really the main important thing is the database. I split up through date and not through category or status like most people do kind of like an urgent in progress, you know, to do completed kind of boards. I split in the dates because there are many days where I'm just tired or I'm not like in a good mental state or I'm just feeling, you know, overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that I have to do. So I want to be able to quickly and easily change the date of those tasks. Like I don't force myself, you know, if I'm not feeling good that day, I'll just change to the next day. It's fine. You know, that that's just like respecting my own health. Sometimes I also have a really good day and I want to do lots of tasks so I can just look what's next in that next week and I can just pull up to that day and complete that day. I also have like tasks that's only going to happen in six months or recurrent tasks like bank holidays. It's just a reminder for me, but everything that I need to have in my mind that I need to plan out or do is on this board. Also, I have other pages here, which are other databases that I linked them together in the same view, just so I can quickly access them. It's my Hobbit habits tracker. Sorry, I call it Hobbit tracker. I know it's not funny, but anyways, it's my habits tracker, weekly schedule and home schedule. So habits is basically just a calendar view of the week. And I created a nice template here where every time I input a new day. So for example, let's add a new item. Um, it already pulls up all this information, which helps me track my habits and everything that I did on that day. So for example, June 20, 2024, I slept eight hours. It was not a quality sleep, even though I slept a lot. Um, I did drink water. I had caffeine, which is something that I'm trying to stop. And I did draw and I did read. And, you know, I had a little bit of a headache as well and my mood was, I don't know, productive and anxious. So this is really useful because even though I don't feel every day, as you can see, I really recommend having that on your Notion and on the template that I created, I left an example of that as well, if you want to duplicate, because this, especially for my health, has been really helpful because it helps me identify patterns and things that don't really seem related to each other, they are. So for example, I have noticed that very often when I don't sleep eight hours or when I don't drink enough water, I will have a headache that day. Of course, that's like a very obvious example, but sometimes you can track other things. For example, I realized that every time I have headache, I drink a lot of coffee. So, you know, this really helps you identify problems and habits that you want to break, not just the ones that you want to cultivate. Other than the habits tracker, I have the weekly schedule. So with the weekly schedule, what I'm trying to do here is it's very focused on my YouTube channel, but I try to do a day for like a full day for a type of task. So, for example, every first day of the month is going to be a reset day. Every Monday is going to be a prep day. Every Tuesday is a focus time for work. Wednesday as well. And then Thursday is a, is a day for posting shorts and Friday is a day for posting video. So this is the ideal schedule that I want to follow. I don't follow this currently because obviously I still have to work 
my normal day job, which is nine to five. And I can't really post videos and shorts every week. But if I get there one day, that will be like my ideal schedule. And then moving on, I have the home schedule, which is just the cleaning. Basically, it's like the it's the family schedule. Everyone follows that. So, for example, on Mondays, we're going to clean the small bathroom downstairs and clean up the office desks and clean the big bathroom upstairs. And then let's say on Thursday is the day to take the beans out and we're going to like wash the bed sheets. You know, it's kind of like a list for the house to keep the house clean because, you know, everyone's busy. It's hard to keep up. And this is just like a reminder so we don't forget and don't end up with a you know, dusty house full of spiders everywhere. <laughs> this is what makes Notion so good for me. Everything else is extra, you know, like that's just added stuff that took me years to get. This quest page is everything you need. And then I have the finances page. The finances page is where I have all my accounts listed and all of my subscriptions, which is super, honestly, like I can't recommend this enough. <laughs> if you have like me, who is like the owner of the house. I'm the only worker of my family. So I pay for everything. I need to have everything tracked. You know, I can get really distracted with all these little costs that are not really essential. I have everything listed here because when I'm short the money, I can just look at this quickly cut out lots of subscriptions. I usually tag them with color, like everything that is pink, I could absolutely cut really quickly. So like PlayStation Network or Epidemic Sounds, you know, these things I can cut if I need extra money. And of course I have stuff that I can't really cut because they are essential. So for example, Sprinkles is my cat and I have the pet insurance, I have the health club, I have the database, you know, all these things I cannot stop paying because it's a health related thing or food delivery, you know, these, these are like essentials. And here on the right, I have the passive or unique income sources that I have. And I use these arrows like green and red. They are just like literal emojis. And I use them to track like if I'm receiving more or less money than usual. So for example, Twitch, I stopped the streaming a couple of months ago. So obviously my revenue is basically zero now. So it, it went down a lot. And then YouTube has gone up, which is great. And I have links to all of these pages so I can have quick access because sometimes they are a little bit fidgety to get around. And I just like to have them easy to access here. Moving on, I have the wishlist page, which is essentially just a board where I save everything that I want to buy and I don't have the money for. So like an Asus Rogalia 3D printer, like these are things I really want, like, and I'm too broke right now. I just save them here and one day, <laughs> one day I'll buy them. Um, something that is really worth having on the wishlist page, I think, is your sizes. So if you do a lot of online shopping like I do, it's great to have your sizes there because then you don't need to keep track of that or measure it again. Then I have my journal. I will blur this page because that's very, very personal, but it's more like a mental health page where when I'm having a really bad day, I just come here <laughs> and read like just my most important memories and just some nice quotes that inspire me and things that I'm thankful for. And then we get to the desk area. So the desk is like everything related to work and projects. So I naturally have a page for my YouTube channel. I split up into two galleries. I have one gallery for all the platforms and basically this has like ideas for posts for every single platform and whatever like is my schedule and if it's active or not. And then here I have a subscribe account. A lot of people do this. So if I click there, it's just a little page where I write down from time to time. I'm trying to do it every month, but I do forget sometimes. And then I have a love board. I'll also blur because <laughs> that's very personal. But if you are a content creator, I can't recommend this enough. Every time someone, some viewer sends a message that is really heartfelt, very lovely, complimenting something or sharing like a deep, like a heartfelt um, comment or thoughts. I save those <laughs> on my love words. So you may have your comments saved here because they motivate me so much. There were so many times where I wanted to give up on YouTube because, you know, it's hard working full time and then making videos and making art and making game and making like doing so much is tiring. But every time I see this love board, I'm like, I cannot give up. This is why I'm here. And then I have a page for my game that I'm developing. 
I also have a database here and this is more, instead of tasks, this is more like, how can I say? It's, it's like a GDD, uh, which is stands for game design document. And here I break down all of this stuff that I need to know for my game. This really helps me to be consistent and to not make a lot of scope creep, you know, which I'm very guilty of. I keep having new ideas and I keep wanting to implement them on the game. And then the game never gets ready because I keep working on it forever and ever. So I did this with the design pillars, the outline of what the game should be about. The vision and style is more like references, um, core mechanics and features and systems are just like the breaking now. It's like mini games, the cards flying on your broom, stuff like that. So I have a full breakdown. It's It literally acts as a GDD, but it's a board format instead of being like a full on document. I also have a list of all my patrons. My patron for my game is actually closed because I changed my game fully and that completely ruined my deadlines that I had to release. So because of that, I deactivated because I didn't want people to keep paying me for a game that I don't know when I'm going to release, but I did save their usernames because it was quite a f like very few. I did save their usernames and emails. So when I do finish this game, whenever that may happen, I'll still send them a free copy because they supported me when I started and I'll forever remember them. So if you were a patron, thank you very much. You will get my game someday <laughs> if I don't die first. Anyways, and then I have my working right now section, which is the spellcasting combat system, but this moves from time to time. It's just because I don't work on my game every day and then it's good to have a reminder of what I should be doing, you know. Uh, of course, this is very specific. Not everyone's developing a game. All of these pages are. It's because I'm a designer and I do a lot of different projects, but you may not need any of those for yourself. Then I have my design page, which is relating to my profession. I'm a UI designer and, you know, like any other person, I need to apply for jobs from time to time. So I have my resume, I have my portfolio, I have ideas for projects to put on the portfolio if I need to spice it up a little. I have some tips for writing a cover letter because some jobs do require that. and. Also, I have a list of all the applications. So right now I did apply for a UI designer role last week. So I have it tracking here. And whenever they give me an answer, I'll just update there. If they don't even interview me, I'll just delete it. But it's very helpful. It has a list of like my questions and things that I would like to ask on a meeting or um, how I will explain my projects when I need to present my portfolio, stuff like that. It's very useful to have that if you're a designer or work with something that needs like a portfolio, like an artist or the artists and stuff like that. Then moving on to the lounge area. These are pages that I use more often than I would like to admit. <laughs> and I would say just a warning, you know, before we get into that, is that I'm a little bit of a freak. I know, don't be concerned. I am a completionist, guys. I want every single video game that I play, I need to do 100%. It's not very normal, I know, I understand, but I need to do 100%. I need to get all the achievements. I need, I need, I need, okay. <laughs> so every single game that I'm playing at the moment, I have listed here on the corner, but these are just pages inside this database. So for my games, this database is split in sponsor, playing, and to be played. Um, sponsor are the games that I got free keys for when I was doing video game videos, uh, which I'm not doing anymore, but I still have them saved as sponsor. And I have a tracking inside each and every page. There is even more content. I'll show you a couple as an example. So for example, the Genshin Impact page is one of the most complete pages that I have at the moment. As you can see here, I have the categories from the database because this is the exact same page that you have here. I just linked it up. And inside I have resources with like build guides and updates timeline with all the dates for the updates this year. And I have the list of characters that I'm building right now. So this is just a single gallery that I have with all characters. And inside I have all the information about the character. After that, 
building gallery, I have another database with my board of things that I have to do to achieve 100%. Not, again, not every game page has that, because <laughs> if it did, then that will be a little bit crazier. Um, but I do have that for Genshin, because Genshin has a lot of like stupid achievements. Like for example, 100% Sumeru. I can't do that because I didn't get the achievements that I need to do the 100%. And I'm tracking the ones that I'm doing. Ugh, honestly, like this is a pain. If you play, you know what I mean. Anyways, and then I have all the characters that I'm gonna pull next and the ones that I'm gonna do on rerun. So this is a very complete page. I have like my parties, my builds, my characters. I track everything about that game because it's like one of my obsessions, but Despite that, I have many pages that are not that complicated. Like for example, Honkai Star Rail. It's a game that I don't play that often. So I just have the characters in the gallery and then I have whatever I'm building right now. And then there are other games where I just have like very simple things. Like for example, Skyrim is a game that I already finished, but I'm trying again just to do the achievements. So I have a quick list of the things that I have to do. And then my favorite mods, cause I need to play with mods. Um, so that's like a very simple page, as you can see, doesn't have much content. You're probably thinking she is a little bit crazy, but look, uh, I like to complete things. I like the 100%, the, it's the dopamine, okay? It helps me. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Um, watch list, I have a board with the things that I'm watching. This is more, I don't use that often, to be honest. This is more to when I see like cool series or cool movies that I want to watch and they don't have the time. Like for example, the Rings of Power, I had the Fallout series, I couldn't watch them when they released. It took me a while. And so I like to write down so I don't forget. And then when I have some extra time on the weekend, I try to watch those. Uh, for books, it's very similar. It's also a database board and I have kind of like what's on my wish list. So it's books that I want to buy. What's already on my shelf, what I'm reading and what's already read. And I have like the reveal and my progress. And this is because for books, I really want to feel like I'm reading a lot on that year. And this helps me feel like I did read lots of things. Um, another thing that I have to do with my books is this wishlist shelf situation, because I have the wishlist, which are books that I want to buy, but I will only buy when I finish the ones on the shelf. <laughs> As you can see, the number is obscene. I have 72 books to read on my shelf. And I keep buying more, buying more, buying more, and I don't finish reading them. So, you know, this past two years, I read only 19 books, which is not enough <laughs> in my opinion, but that's still cool to track. And there are lots of series where, like for example, Assassin's Apprentice is 15 books. <laughs> I only started with the first, but I'm absolutely loving it. It's such a blast. Um, a Court of Thorns and Roses, Please don't come at me, but I really do not like that series. Um, so it's back to the shelf. I'm not even going to finish, I think. And, you know, like everything that I'm reading, like Castle in the Sky, which is the Ghibli House Moving Castle book, everything that I'm reading or read, I list here. I track my progress. I try to read them before buying more. This is just to stop my buying. Um, I also have some quick links here. It's like the good reads. Uh, recommendations and book Leo recommendations, which is an amazing YouTuber. So I'll link her in the description below. So here I have my vision page and I have this gallery with the pages. These sub pages are goals, reset day, add and subtract family, health and mental health. Goals is, you know, quite straightforward. I usually only look at this page on the New Year's. <laughs> I'll be honest, like I don't really look at that often. Reset day is what I, it's kind of like my plan for when I'm having bad days. As you probably have realized from this video, I have a lot of struggles um, with my mood and energy levels during the days. Family is about my siblings and my cat. For example, my sprinkles section inside the family is everything about my cat. So this is my cat, Sprinkles, he's a cutie, and I have all the information about him, like his birth date, his adoption date, the brands of food and water and everything that he's having at the moment, the health notes, so when is his nail clip, his vet, his next vaccine, um, all the days that I gave him the worm treatment, all his medical documentation, you know, everything that I did for the adoption task list. So every information relating to Sprinkles and all of my family members that I need to keep track of, because again, I'm the responsible for the whole family. On the health, I have kind of like my exercise uh, schedule. This is also linked on my quests uh, page that I showed earlier. And this is like mental health. 
um, page, which I'll not go into details. Then I have my travel database. It's literally just a gallery. Inside the gallery, I just drop an image of the location and let's say a list of places and things that I want to do on that place when I visit. I have the upcoming trips and then the past trips that are already completed. Then I have the map. This is like, I don't even use this. This is just to make the page prettier, to be honest. And then I have a packing list with everything that I need to bring with me when I travel. Then I have my workshop. Workshop is my source for all sorts of references and images. Every time I'm scrolling on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and I see an artist doing amazing art that moves me or inspires me, I straight after come here and add them to my database. And every time something happens, I go to my Notion. I don't need to search on my email. I don't need to search Google Drive on my Dropbox. So I'll always have all the information that I need in my Notion. And that is super useful. That has unloaded so much information from my brain and it helps me live more calm, <laughs> you know, more easily. Of course, that doesn't apply to my games page that I just go full on craze there. But ignoring the games page, I feel like the notion is very clean, very simplified and helps me get everything done productively, but not overwhelmingly, if that makes sense. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, there is one thing that I don't use notion for, which is for writing stories. And I'll explain why now. This is because for me personally, it's easier to break down stories visually using false. And unfortunately, Notion doesn't have that feature yet. I use Obsidian, which is extremely useful in case you want an alternative to Notion that is installed on your computer instead of being cloud-based. And they op operate very similarly. Obsidian is also free. And I wanted to mention it as well, since some people will definitely prefer Obsidian rather than Notion. And that concludes the tour. So thank you so much. If you watched this far, a last reminder is that there are very nice templates out there to buy and download. But if you just want a, a quick thing, head to the description. I'll link my template there. You can download right now. My template is free, but of course, donations are appreciated and show support. You can just go ahead to my Ko-Fi page and donate there. Um, I'll also link some shops down below if you want, if you prefer to buy something from a, another shop. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.